Back in the year 16, the first Canon executive crawled out of his cave and he wanted to make a camera that didn't disappoint his wife. He was unable to, of course, but he tried still. So I've had about a week to play with the R5. I got the R6 as well. I've done a bunch of comparisons versus every camera I've ever tried, including the A7S III. Now let's just talk. Let's talk about the R5 and R6. Are they worth it? Can they contend with the, oh, hey, Fuji. Hey, Fuji. Let's find out. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I just wanted to see briefly because I compared the Fuji X-T4 to the R6 and we'll talk about that but I wanted to see what it looked like versus the Canon R5's line skipped mode. Are we overheating? No. We're just recording. The red, no. Oh, glad you made it the same color in the same spot. I love that. How we doing on it? Regular 4K versus line skipped 4K. Is there much of a difference? Believable. Let's just turn the Fuji up. Okay, so let's talk about these Canons. They're enigmas. They're both so opposite. They both have such cripple hammer dents in them that you're like, oh, why did that? Oh, this one has this. It's lacking that. The R5 and R6 both lack key things for no reasons. First one, let's just talk about this. The R5, Canon colors. They're beautiful. I love you so much. The R6, they crippled the color system matrix somehow. How did they do it? Why did they do it? It's the same basic technology. And they make it like yellow, green skin, alien shit. So you gotta pay for Canon color science now? What the flying shit is that? A couple observations I made. When I first tried the R6 in 1080p, it looked so much better than my Fuji. But I was out of focus. That's why it looked better. A moron. When I got it out and actually compared it versus the Fuji, I found the 1080p of the Fuji was almost as good as the 4K of the Canon R6. I was like, wow, okay, once you do it right and you get a Fuji lens on there, 1080p was better on the Fuji. The 120 frames per second also better. 240 frames per second looked pretty equal, only it's twice as slow, advantage Fuji. I have so many thoughts running through my mind right now. This video is gonna be all over the place, but I prefer the Fuji to the R6. It's just easier to use. It's so much cheaper and lighter and you get like pretty much the same results image quality wise. I would say the Fuji has a little bit more dynamic range than the R6, but it's so close, but it's not really. Like the Fuji exposes a lot better than the R6. So you're gonna look like you have more dynamic range on a tiny little APS-C camera. Canon still has not caught up in that. And for some reason, the Canons, I don't get it. It must be user error, but you can't change metering modes in video. And it just, it now exposes for the highlights always, no matter what you do, no matter what you do. Let's do it. This is what you can expect now, to be dark always. And then you get in close and then it starts struggling with the autofocus. I don't know how to fix it. I'm used to like, pointing my head to the sky and then like it brightens up it might clip the sky a bit okay we sacrifice that that white balance got weird fast so you gotta like get rid of all highlights we're gonna bounce back to normal colors one day this makes them kind of unusable for vlogging i was out the other day and you have to be pointed towards the sun if you're the other way you're not exposed at all it's complete darkness so I don't know what they changed or what I'm doing wrong. I don't see what I've changed. There's nothing. When it comes to which camera I would recommend for YouTube or hobos, you gotta pick your poison. The 1080p is so much better on the R5. I didn't realize how bad the R6 was until I saw it side by side. It's like line skip 1080p. It's good enough. It really is. You could do it, but it's not very good. If you go up to 4K, you're witnessing the line skipped mode now. It's probably decent enough for YouTube, but the 4K on the R6 is better than this, but that will overheat at some point. Although in daily life, I'm telling you, they don't overheat. I went down to the beaches. I filmed like a normal person would, just make a couple clips and then walk around, get some B-roll, 120 frames per second, turn the camera off. 
it didn't even get close to overheating. It was down to like 10 minutes left at one point, but it was fine. But I thought I'd film a high quality 4K test in here, just a video like this, and it overheated in about 34 minutes. And then I put it by a fan, thing was cold to the touch, ice cold, and it was still like, oh, we can only do 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, it's the best I can. <laughs> what are you doing, Canon? <laughs> It would not cool down. I know there's this new hack where you change the date and yank the battery. Like who cares? I don't want to be doing this shit. <laughs> Stupid hacks. I was going to test that today, but then I thought these files suck to edit. They're the worst I've ever seen. I can't even play them. I have to generate optimized media. It takes an hour at least. And the timer never seems to go down. It's like 25 minutes left. And then 10 minutes later, so 26 minutes. Sorry, we underestimated that. It's annoying as shit. And then it edits fine. And you can do that, but I hate that workflow. You get, like I have one video ready to be edited now because I had to go out while it was rendering. And now I can edit it. Last night I was up till 10.30 p.m. That's way past a normal person's bedtime. Editing, because I didn't want to shut my computer down because the files will probably end. Doing that creates like 200 gigabyte files on your desktop. You better have space for that. My old hard drive couldn't even look at those. Same with the R6, they're hard to edit. So you have to do this workflow where you're rendering and using proxies and shit. Like that ain't the YouTuber life. If you want to pump out videos, YouTube rewards you for making more and more content as often as possible. So that's what I do, I just pump it out there. But this is shit. <laughs> This, I would never recommend a Canon, even though the image, I'm in love, I'm in love. Right now, love is happening. Love is in the air. <laughs> is this a good shot? This is a good shot, that's a good shot. I tell you, I like this lens, even though it's heavy. If you don't use the tripod and you just hold it by the lens, it's kind of fun. It's a fun, it's not too heavy, it's not too unreasonable. But when you want to get it out there, it's stupid. And if you want to compare it to other cameras and you never get a rest on that arm, it's impossible. But like, I kind of like having the super wide and then you can zoom in a little bit. It's a good lens. I hope Fuji comes out with that. We'll make a video on what I demand from their new Mark II 10 to 24. Better be good. But I will say the stabilization's not good. It's wavy and warpy, it's not good. They never are at this length. It's not even better at 20. I just compared it to the Sony at 20 mil. It wasn't as good. It was slightly better at 24, but it's still kind of weird. It even gets dark, like it vignettes more in the corner. I don't like it at all. So technically, if you're thinking, oh, the R6 is the cheaper camera, it's better. It is, but then you don't get the Canon color science. You get like 1984 Sony color science. It's not as good. So it, that kind of ruins the camera for me. And it does overheat in 4K eventually. And when it does, you have to fall back to line skip 1080p for like three grand. It's just how, how could you possibly recommend this over any other camera out there? And then the R5 is just so expensive and the hard to edit files just really ruin the workflow. It ruins the joy of shooting. I don't even want to film with this thing anymore. I want to send them back immediately, even though I have no time limit restrictions from camera can you sent me the cameras. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's like, do I really want to do this more generating optimized media? It's a pain in the bitch. And the autofocus has been struggling on me out in the vlog world. It just like a little bit of shade hits the side of your face once and it screws with you. It's not like Sony. I made what, like nine videos on the Sony a7S III. There was only one moment briefly where I walked under the darkest shaded tree you've ever seen. The thing was 300 years old. And it just, for a brief moment, it went to the background and came back. And that was the one time, nine videos. Whereas this thing, every single video I've made, it's been hunting a bit. So I don't know, it feels like Canon's just gonna continually cripple their cameras. It's almost as if a hammer has been allowed to run rampage over there factory long time no see these are good I love the technology you put in there 4k 60p 
It's amazing. Color science of the R5, at least. It's good. Better than the Sony, that's for sure. Who wants that thing? Not me. Good cameras. I'm going to buy one, probably. How do you edit the files, actually? Why didn't you put the color sign? How come you're so much better than Sony now? You have caught up to Sony. Finally, Canon is the best. Best video specs. Can Sony do 8K? No, they can't. They can't. They can't. It's too bad, because if you're outside and you're just standing there and you're not walking, you get one of the best images ever. The Canon R5, the HQ 4K. It's almost as good as their 8K. You can barely tell a difference. I barely saw a smidgen. I was like, all right, not bad. But then it's ruined in so many ways. Just hard to edit files. Overheating problems in the best modes. If you take photographies, here's two side-by-side -side pictures. One is shot with the Sony a7S III. The other is shot with the Canon R5. Guess which one is which. Can you even tell? Think long and hard. This is the best shot of our time. I got a dumpster. I managed to get it in the shot somehow. It's amazing shot. Which one is better? Just look at it. Which is the better shot? The one on the right was the Sony. Canon's on the left. Here's another shot. Unfortunately, different days, different cars. But there are some cars for you. Which one is which? Did I put the same Sony on the right or the left? What did I do? Can you even tell? Like, for photography, viewing it on your screen. Sony was on your left this time. I switched it up a notch. I took you out of the game. You don't even know what to expect. I got one more coming. Another dumpster. Unfortunately, one of them had shoes, which made it art. The first shot was lacking that, so it's not really a fair comparison, but which is the more pleasing image of behind a dumpster? Sony a7S III is on your left again. I tricked you, you thought I was gonna switch back. I did not. So for photography, I don't know. Obviously if you're blowing it up and you wanna print and you take that serious, you might wanna go with the Canon, but not me. I think the Sony kills it in every area but color science, but all the files, like it has slower slow motion, 4K 120p, I couldn't even test that thing. That wouldn't even have run if I tried. It's just the better camera, better IBIS, better autofocus, more confident, lighter than the R5 at least. Cheaper too. Better lenses. Sony has so much better lenses. Canon has nothing right now, nothing wide. Their widest prime is 35 mils, if it was a foot. I don't think either R5 or R6 are better than the Fuji. Just in all encompassing, you take everything into consideration. The Fuji is just as good, it's just the lenses are freaky on that thing. They don't autofocus well at times. But you get the right lens. The kit lens is pretty confident outside, and the 18mm Tony 2 outside, they won't lose you much. But like every other lens I've tried, it hunts. But just comparing the R5 next to all my other cameras, the Olympus held its own. It looked just as good, if not better. Sometimes it exposed better when I pointed my face towards the sky. I was bright, the sky was pleasing enough, it clipped a little bit, but it was better looking, so much cheaper and lighter, better stabe. Even the Samsung NX1, it was a little shakier, but it was good. It was almost as sharp as the 4K HQ mode, and that doesn't overheat ever, and it was easy to play. I did much prefer the R5 colors to Panasonic, and that's why I'm voiding Panasonic from my life. I just, I don't see it. It always does something weird to my skin. Canon makes like normal skin. This is probably how I look in real life. Like it's white skin with bits of red, blood in my face. Whereas Canon's just pure orange or yellow. It's just strange. And like my hair is black. And on the Panasonic, it's kind of like almost red. And I don't want to be playing, oh, take red out of the highlights. The shadows, I mean, oh no. Oh, Canon and Olympus almost looked identical color-wise. So they got it. 
but the R6, they cripple it. You got Sony color, so I don't know what the hell, these things. I figure we finish the video off in 8K. No problem. Why not? I should still be sharp back here. Punching in. Should be just as good. It's 8K. This is what it's used for. The lighting is not as good back here, admittedly. How you doing? Is this worth it? 8K? That's the original. Here's the original, and here's my face over here. Is 8K technology the best? It says I only have five minutes of 8K because I stressed it out by filming line skipped 4K. I couldn't handle it. And the custom mode thing with the R6. It is so annoying. Do you know how many button presses it takes to switch into slow-mo? Let me show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, shutter. We're good. That's bullshit. On the Fuji, it's a button press, an up, and a shutter. On the Canon, it would be a mode dial, but it's a press and a switch. Sony is a dig your fingernail in to the, and awkwardly switch it. Why can nobody do it right? Panasonic. Boom. But then you have Panasonic colors. It's not worth it. I'll let you know if these files are easy to edit after generating optimized media for three hours. Is it easy? There you know. And here we are. So I can't recommend them with my whole heart if you're a YouTuber. They're just so much more pain than they're worth, but such a great image if you do have this camera and you have a supercomputer that can play the files and you don't mind shaky footage. They certainly aren't leading the field though. These aren't the top of the notch, even though they cost the most. So I'm gonna leave. What do you think down below? Are these supercomputers or eh? Just okay offering, slightly better than the EOS R. Worse in some ways. That thing exposed better for me. I don't know what mode's on. There's no highlight tone priority on in here. It's just weird shit. So I'm gonna leave. Thanks for buying a camera conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more videos.